Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Heart Talk call. Today is July 31st in the year 2018. Can you believe it? Over half the year is gone already. <laughs> and uh, I know, I know. Hi there, Val. And it is, um, I am Sue Ellen Dickinson, and I will be your host and with you for the next hour or so. We've got a lot of great stuff to go over today. And I want to hear what you have to say. But before we go there, let me just remind you that Heart Talk is so much more than just an ordinary call. And why is that, you ask? Great question. Because this is where you can speak your mind straight from your heart. And that is exactly what we're going to do this morning, just like we do every every Tuesday morning on Heart Talk. But let me also remind you that Heart Talk is brought to you by... The essentials. And yes, uh, what are the essentials, you may ask? Well, another great question. The essentials are a supplemental, a nutritional supplemental formula uh, designed for us, MSers, by our very own Dr. Rudy Cartwright. And Dr. Cartwright is a very well renowned um, neurosurgeon, he's a brain surgeon, and also happens, just happens to be an expert in multiple sclerosis. And he has Actually, he has a whole line of products, but I call it the Essentials the flagship product because it's sort of the granddaddy of them all, you know, and uh, to me, they're just, they're just great, and I don't think you can, you know, really want to go through the day without your Essentials. In fact, I can't think of a better name that he, he could come up with than to call them the Essentials, and why? Well, because the Essentials can help get rid of fatigue, they can help stop pain, neck tingling, and numbness. They can help with vision problems and balance. And they can help clear up that pesky old brain fog that we all love to hate, right? And, uh, and by the way, they are made up of all natural ingredients. I guess I didn't mention that at the top, did I? But they are all natural ingredients. And, yes, you can take them with your current medications, question I get all the time. Can I take them with my current meds? Answer, yes. And then that comes straight from um, the uh, maker of these wonderful things themselves, and that would be Dr. Cartwright, who says, yes, you can take them with your meds. Go ahead. So if you're looking for a way to get some of your energy back, looking um, to uh, maybe do some of the things that you did before, before uh, effortlessly, uh, effortlessly. Oh, boy, we have an echo in the background, but I hope that's the way. Uh, Can you guys hear that echo, by the way? Yes. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope that it leaves us. could be that bad weather I was telling you all about. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let me wrap this part up. Um, The essentials are helping you to feel better. They're helping lots of people to feel better. One less symptom at a time. So where can you get these wonderful essentials? Another great question. I'm going to be sending you an email um, when we're done, um, shortly after we're done here. And in it, in that email will be the replay, so you can listen to this great conversation again and share it with family and friends, uh, this conversation we're going to have uh, here in just a few minutes. And uh, not only is the link to the replay going to be in there, but also scroll down about halfway and... Um, you will see the link for um, the essential capital letters. It will say, Get Dr. Cartwright Supplements. Click on that, and you will be able to read um, everything I've just talked about, the essentials, and more. And uh, click on that that button and get yourself a bottle of the essentials. Try them out. I know you're going to be glad you did um, because they really are helping people to feel better one less symptom at a time. And uh, I know we've got a lot of people on this call right now who take them and swear by them. And by the way, so do I. So pick yourself up some essentials. I know you'll be very, very glad you did. So on that wonderful note of information, let's get started because um, as I've told everybody, before we hit that record button, we've got some rough weather out in the Gulf of Mexico that is heading straight for land, uh, right where where I live on the beautiful Gulf of Mexico, but sometimes we pay the price with harsh weather, and um, 
let's hope that it dissipates and dissolves before it hits the shoreline and uh, comes here to bother us because I really don't want anything to mess up our phone call today and our, our conversation. So let's keep our fingers crossed and all that good stuff um, that it doesn't. But I wanted to give you a heads up that that's what's going on and that may be what's creating the echo and little static, this and that, on the call right now. So, but um, let's go ahead and get started. I, uh, as, as you know, I, I research through the week. You know, we, we go through one, uh, one hard talk call, and then I'm back to my research looking for something else that we can talk about next time. And um, it's, it's a lot of fun. And at the same time, you know, sometimes I really have to dig for something that I think is going to be um, informative and entertaining in a way and something that you're going to like. Um, and this week was no exception. And um, usually it isn't you know, a hard thing to do because we've got a lot of great uh, writers, great uh, uh, people out there, MSers who are writers, um, have taken up that, that talent um, and expressing themselves. And so I ran across one by a gal by the name of Diane Scott. And we have used some of her pieces before. Um, but with this one, um, boy, did this, did this hit a nerve with me. Um, because there's so much to be said about what she wrote here. It's really, in my opinion, it's bittersweet. Now, I hope a lot of you, oh, most of you, hope all of you got the uh, email that I sent out yesterday. Um, she calls this... Um, this piece, that darn photograph, um, and uh, I couldn't have thought of a better. I can't call it. Title. Um, it won't let me. Are you talking, uh, Day? Is that? Oh, is that sorry, you? sorry. That's okay. Yeah, hit your mute, mute button, dear. There you go. Um, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. They say. Well, that's what Diane's talking about here, um, because sometimes. I think whether we run across a photograph of, of yesterday or whether we run into memories of yesterday, you know, the feelings are, can, can be pretty much the same thing. Um, anyway, this is, this is what she wrote um, about, uh, about um, that darn photograph. And if you didn't get it, the email that is I want to read it to you to kind of refresh your memory and um, if if you didn't if you didn't get it um, you'll be hearing it for the very first time I think we all can relate to this in our own way with our own lives Um, I know I certainly can Um, just reading her expression of how of her feelings about this and and the experience of finding this old photograph that she had um, just Oh, my goodness. It brought up so many memories. So I would like to hear what you have to say um, and what your experience might be, whether it's, you know, from just, you know, your memory bank, thoughts just rattling around in your head, or, you know, whether you've got pictures that you can actually sort through like she did. So let's start with this. Um, Let me go ahead and read this email to you. Let me get a sip of my juice. One second. There we go, because I think this is very poignant. This is very pertinent, and I think it has a lot to do and ties in very well with so much that we do talk about here on Heart Talk. So let's hear what Diane Scott has to say. I think you can relate. Here she is. Exactly how I happened upon it, I'm not exactly sure, but there it was. A picture of me at work. The memories came rushing back, and I relished in them. It made me smile. (laughs) I remembered the day having my co-worker wanting to take the picture that morning, the outfit, how much I enjoyed my job, how I felt when when I was able to work. I stumbled on this photograph, and it kind of made me laugh. It took me way back, way back down memory lane. I was posed, standing in my office, in front of my desk, not a single mobility assistive device present. I stood straight and tall, not holding onto or propped up on anything. 
I was dressed smartly in a cute just above the knee dress with a blazer and knee high riding boots. Though I fondly recall those good old days, the recollection also highlights the the other side I live with at this juncture. Now, that particular outfit is not one of my wheelchair-friendly outfits. Chronic bilateral foot and ankle edema from being sedentary so often prevents me from wearing my footwear of choice, and no way can I stand unassisted anymore or work. Ah, the memories and contrast of then and now all infiltrated my mental Rolodex. Why, oh why, did I have to find this photograph? Thought I had forgot the past, but now I'm slipping past. Back down memory lane. I feel the happiness. I feel the pain. Here am I, back down memory lane. I I try to regulate when I allow myself to think back. You know, to travel down memory lane. There are times when it's okay, but definitely times when it's not. <clears throat> Admittedly, there are times I feel a bit doleful, remembering the, the pre-MS or pre-MS progression days, like that darn photograph highlighted, when life was so much easier in so many ways, does nothing to bring me cheer. Never wanting to stay despondent, though, it's those times that I desperately try to redirect my focus to new life pleasures because I definitely have some. I'm in the sunshine. I'm in the rain. I don't want to go traveling down faster than the speed of sound, back down memory lane. Be still, my foolish heart. Don't let this feeling start. Back down memory lane. I don't want to go. Save me. Save me. I don't want to be mistaken for a Grinch or considered forlorn. Nor do I mean to sound bitter. This is just me being transparent. My reality is that I'm living with a chronic debilitating disease, and although I manage pretty well with mood, attitude, and spirit, there'll be something that threatens my newly adapted comfort zone by way of a random memory of yesteryear, such as song, an article of clothing, or a darn photograph. Let's, so let's talk about this. What do you say? And just, just one moment, guys. Patty? Where, there, there's lightning. Where, where, where is the lightning? Okay. 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 Um, we are, uh, I, I hate to be a mood breaker here, guys, but we are about to get hammered. Mm. And we've got thunder and lightning. Um, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes and see what happens. Um, but anyway, can, can we start the discussion? And if, if this gets too bad, everybody, I'm, I'm going to have to jump off. But let's hope that it doesn't. So um, I'm checking the radar right now. And I do apologize. Well, they say when thunder roars, head indoors. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's all I have to say because I found it on weather.com the other day. And I said, oh. oh, so very true. Yeah. And is. if you have to go, my dear, go ahead. Yeah, I'm checking right out right now. Um, yeah. Checking it right now. Because you're important to us all. We don't oh, want to lose you. you. Right. You. All right, I'm looking. It doesn't look like it's too big a deal, but it does look like it's a little on the fierce side. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm just going to keep the radar up and keep looking. But, um, yeah. What do you guys think about what I just read? What do you think? Well, I think um, it talks about um, a day when things were great, when you felt incredibly happy and carefree and life was wonderful. I mean, sure, everybody goes through hard times, but... um, I think that it maybe reflects something that a lot of us don't have right now. Um, And it's a sadness 
in a way to see it because we feel so far away from it from what we we call today we call normal you and i call normal yeah. is yeah. that what you mean yeah 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 to her that was a normal day yeah at the office yeah and I think she happened to look extra cute that day in her outfit or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the worker, co-worker. Carefree, carefree, yeah. getting yeah. her picture taken. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. That seems you, to be miles away from where a lot of us are. Yeah. 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 Do, do you run across those things, Virginia? Do you run across pictures or memories? I guess, you know, there are many ways of revisiting the normal days, but how does that happen in your life? Good question. Um, Do you allow it to happen in your life? No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think about... Uh, well, I do, I do think about being different, you know, <laughs> and not being able to function the same way that, um, yeah, being able to function... Mm-hmm. It, that I have difficulty with now. So, yeah, there's, I don't have that picture at work, you know, yeah. standing in front of my desk, smiling and feeling all proud and, yeah. you know, cute. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. My mind got sidetracked while you were reading the article, Sue Ellen. Uh-huh. I was, I was thinking of the day that I did take pictures with a, you know, just snapshot pictures uh-huh. of, like, family members, my nieces and nephews, and growing up. And while they were growing up, I took a lot of pictures and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just try. I did, not, I did not ever like my picture taken, but I love taking pictures of the kids mm-hmm. and my siblings with their families. And it, um, it's just kind of funny. Uh, about six or last fall, my brother-in-law died, and um, the at the funeral they had all kinds of pictures out, you know. Oh sure. And mm-hmm. at the beginning of their marriage, or for about the first ten years of their marriage, the pictures that I saw, they were pictures that. I gave to my sister. I I always had uh, duplicates made when I had them developed, and then I would oh, I see. Sure. give the duplicates to whoever the picture was, the family. Mm-hmm. And I just had I I just thought to myself, I took that picture. I took oh. that picture. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, most of the pictures that were there were pictures that mm-hmm. I had taken. Of you know, of the a lot of times it would be like the family would be together, and I would take the entire family. Sure. And I'd try to seat them, you know, in a way that that it would. Yeah, I tried to make these pictures look good, type mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it was, you know, the kids they would just kind of laugh at me or make funny faces and wouldn't. Well, oh, that's cute. Oh. That's, cute. Yeah. That's, that's what kids do. Yeah. Those were yeah. the things I was thinking of when you yeah. were reading the article. <laughs> well, how, do you run across those pictures now, and how does that make you feel? Well, I could if I wanted to. Um, I, mean, I guess I saw, you know, a lot of them at the time of, you know, last, last November. Um, I could pull them out. I, how, it's almost like I don't want to pull them out because that will take up too much of my time looking through all of them. <laughs> oh, but happy times, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, take them out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do, but then I wouldn't get, you know, if I felt, if I'm feeling halfway decent, then I won't get my work done. <laughs> well, you know, you can, you can break it up. You don't yeah, have to look at them right. all at once. Yeah. Yeah. But Sherry, but what Sherry is saying, um, I really relate to it in the sense that I try to take pictures now, and and I too enjoyed photography before, and I try to take pictures now, and because of my hands, like especially if it's my phone, I can't hold it right, mm-hmm. and my fingers get into the picture, and you know it just is a disaster, and then. 
I'll take my iPad and that's a little bit better. But most of the time I just have to ask somebody else to take the picture because I can't do it. And, and I feel like Sherry, it's like that's one definite thing I've lost. And every time I go to take a picture now, I'm reminded that, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. Yeah, I used to have, uh, in the later years, I used to have my husband take the pictures. But that's no longer available now. <laughs> but how, what I want to know is how does this make you guys feel looking back? Over so yesterday, you're going down memory lane. How does it make you feel? Well, it definitely makes you feel sad because definitely that's something you've lost. And you would like, like today, I mean, okay, for example, right now in Calgary Zoo are panda bears, which are, like, they're adorable. Yeah. And yeah. you go and look at them and you want to take pictures of the pandas and and, like, you know, I've had to just um, pass my phone off to a stranger and ask them to take a picture for me because I can't do it. And I want a picture of the pandas or I want a video of them. Of You know, the video is the best because it's um, where you're seeing them actually sitting there eating their bamboo. And, and like I say, they're just... They're just so adorable. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're so adorable. You can't take quit taking pictures of them. I know. But you know what? It's really great that you're able to hand your phone off to someone else and say, could you please take this picture for me because they're so cute. Yes. And, 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 really people, and people do oblige you, you know, mm -hmm. and, but at the same time you're, you're conscious of the fact if they run away with my phone, there's nothing I could do, which I, I don't think anybody looking mm. at the pandas, that's on their mind. Their, their mind yeah. is on the pandas. So I don't think, you know, I don't think that's a high risk, but at the same time you realize, well, they could, yeah. and you couldn't do anything about it if they did run away. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, it is, you know, and, and there is a sadness because you're used to, to taking the picture yourself and and um, I guess you how do I say it it's like you're used to your own art of, mm -hmm. of taking pictures right where where now I mean you know you have to rely on what somebody else does and be happy with that not what what you would like to do mm -hmm. so anyway it's one of those things, and, and, and like you say, Virginia, it, it, you, you still get your picture because somebody else has been kind to you. Yeah, and it's a happy picture. It's a great picture, right, of the yeah. pandas. I mean, what a, I don't know that anybody would run away with your phone in such a, a wonderful, happy, silly situation. Yeah, you know, because and, you look and at you're these right. Pandas, they're just so silly. You know, cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. Like mm -hmm. they are. They're gorgeous. And and I actually have a zoo pass, so I get to go in. I can go any time I want to go oh, and that's see them. Great. Yeah. So it's, it, they're certainly being fun be, having them here in Calgary. Well, we yeah, they just came from Toronto. So we had them here in Toronto. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How long they are they from, there? For? No, I guess it doesn't matter. I was just going to say, well, how long are they there for? The um, the the cubs. Um, one of the employees told me last time I was there that he thinks they go, probably will go back just after Christmas. Hmm. But the mum and dad pandas are here for five years. Oh and wow! So and so we're hoping they make new cubs. <laughs> New pandas, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they make We're baby they make, pandas. They make new babies because mm -hmm. the babies that like came from Toronto, mm -hmm. the the mother has now um, indicated, I guess that she doesn't want them near her now, so they're oh, really? separated, and that means they're grown pandas, like. Even though oh. they're young, 
they're okay. grown pandas and so that the indication and how she does that I don't really know mm-hmm. and the man at the zoo kind of indicated to me that at the first indication she didn't want them they had separated the, mm-hmm. like her from them yeah. and then like I say um, if they leave then we hope there's going to the mom and dad will make some new babies so we'll have mm-hmm. some baby pandas to see which will be so exciting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to see yeah, these new we have them when absolutely they were really adorable yeah, yeah. <clears throat> how yeah. um heather how how long have you been taking pictures you know, f- photography um i'm going to say i started in my 20s so it was probably for a good 40 or more years like probably more wow. like 50 years that I took photography and actually when I was in my probably mid 20s I had a roommate and her um, uh, brother had married a girl from just south of Calgary and it's in a ranch area and they were ranch like from a ranch family so we used to spend a lot of our weekends down there um, you know, acting like ranchers. I'm a city person. She was from the country, so there was a big difference between her and me on the ranch. Like, um, I was, you know, I was just learning to ride the horses and do the ranch work where she could fit right in, so there was a big difference. But a lot of weekends, we just went down there, and then we, like, I mean, we do a huge amount of photography hmm. of it. That sounds of, neat. Yeah. That's, that sounds so, neat. So, it, so, yeah. You, so we, yeah. Well, you've got we some had, great memories. I mean, oh, you've yeah. got some great memories, Heather. Yeah. So, so that's why I say um, it's like, you know, 40, 50 years of, doing photography, and now suddenly you can't even hold the camera. Yeah. So, so how, how, does that, how does that make you feel now? How does that make you feel? Looking well, back, um, being so active, and basically being able to do anything you want and take pictures of anything you want, and now you can't hold the camera. What, what, is, what, is, what does that do to you? you know? mostly, mostly it's a frustration. Mostly it's a frustration because it is like, I can't, can't do this. And, and for example, um, I was taking picture, a picture of something here the other night. And it was um, like, I, like I did manage to get the picture done, but like the, like if the camera would tip down. So you're getting something in there while well, you're going to have to crop it off because like you don't want that in it, so you're gonna to have to crop it. So it's like the only way you could get it was to do a lot of, of cropping afterwards, mm-hmm. where like normally that would not be the case. It's like you take the picture the way you want it, and yeah, you know, and and even then, like maybe it wasn't the best picture in the world, but it was a good memory of picture. But now it's like just a big frustration because well I can't do it and that's when I hit the frustration point I hand it off to somebody and ask them can you please take a picture now the other day I was at the zoo and it actually was a thunderstorm came up and I went in I went into um, this building that has tropical plants and butterflies Mm. and you know I was trying to get pictures of the plants and this lady came up and she actually took my camera and I just wheeled my wheelchair behind her and showed her, well, I want a picture of this or I want a picture of that or I want, and she took all my pictures. Nice. So, you know, it, yes. And, and, and I have to say, you never go out on your wheelchair, but you meet kind, kind people. Like mm. I've, I will say that and I heard somebody else say that recently that, you meet so many kind people. Mm-hmm. Well, That's we are wonderful. Canadian, you know. 
What's that, Virginia? <laughs> I said, well, we are Canadian, you know. <laughs> okay, and Virginia, yes, I'm going to say that. Um, and I don't mean to offend any American, but I recently was working with an American doctor, and Virginia, I have to say, there was a huge difference mm. between us, between her and the Canadians. Mm. And I'm not offending any Americans by saying that because... I know there are many beautiful American people, Mm -hmm. but I just noticed a difference. And I guess, Virginia, well, you have to be a Canadian to know know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Americans quite often say that we just, we're too polite. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, so. That's right, and actually, I've... Um, picked up on things where I agree where the Americans would say we're too polite where I agree with them because um, you know we'll say I'm sorry when <laughs> when for no like you're for just no doing what you're reason. doing there's no reason <laughs> to say I'm sorry but we'll say I'm sorry I know <laughs> You might have brushed up against somebody's jacket or something. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Or less. You know, like it, it's even like you're, two people are trying to go through the door at the same time, and yeah. the one person says, I'm sorry. Well, you had a right to go through that door as much as I did. <laughs> yeah. But you're sorry. Yeah. But, yeah. but like uh-huh. it. I get it. The Americans, when they say we're we're too polite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I oh, think well. that's pretty great. I think that's pretty great. Yeah, and yeah. I do too. I <laughs> don't do change too. a thing, ladies. Don't yeah. change a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I like listening to you, ladies. I know they're, they're oh, great to Carol, listen, aren't they? Yeah, you're so nice. <laughs> Are you Canadian? <laughs> no, she's American. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Heather, uh, when you Heather, when you were talking about, you know, giving your phone to someone and basically hoping that they would not run away with it, I mm-hmm. I remember um, in in the seventies three. Uh, Three of us gals decided to drive out to Vegas from, uh, this would have been from Spencer, Iowa. And uh, we, first of all, our first stop was in Colorado Springs because I had a brother there. And then he mapped us out a way to Vegas. And uh, we stopped at the Four Corners. And I have, I have a snapshot picture that one of the girls on the trip had taken and I'm some some gentleman invited me to look through his binoculars and you know at first I kind of hesitated but then I didn't and he was helping me adjust them but the reason why this gal took the picture she was laughing because he had a long he had a long string on the binoculars, it was like she was not going to walk away with them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So yeah. you, could, you could look, but for sure you couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Right. I mean, and I did not notice that until after afterwards. This friend, Carla, she was just laughing about it. And so now I have that picture. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this yeah, is, I, I used to be pretty. Crazy. I used Go ahead, to take Jay. pictures a lot back when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And then, well, last picture I took, I put it on my computer somehow or another. I got it deleted. So the third thing is, a picture of Dan back when I first met him, and I'll never have that picture again. It's like, oh bummer. Oh, but I get a look at that guy every day, though. <laughs> I don't need a camera. I get a look at him. And today he's 43 years old. Ooh, happy birthday. Yeah, happy thank birthday. you. I'll tell him. Okay. I, I signed his card today, put it on the table, so he gets it when he gets home tonight. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And we had a birthday party for him there Sunday at his dad's house. Mm-hmm. And his brother and sister bought tickets to a concert in, it's going to be in Capital, no, yeah, Capital Bluffs, Iowa in the in September. 
Ooh. Yeah, his sister bought the tickets. His <coughs> brother, uh, his sister purchased the tickets. His brother bought them, though. Mm-hmm. What concert is that? Yeah, yeah what is it? Okay, oh. Judas Priest. Has pretty. Judas Priest is a very rock and roll, I guess you could rock, say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, rock and roll. That's what he grew up with. He just loved Judas Priest when he was a teenager. Yeah. And so they had to listen to that every single day. And, mm-hmm. well, they like it, too. So mm-hmm. they got tickets to it. It's 100 bucks a person. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. Well, you know, if it's something you really, really love, go for go it. Go for it. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. you'll never have it again. He's only yeah. going to be 43 once. He's going to continue getting older. Oh, aren't we all, though? Yeah. yeah. Funny how the calendar goes like that, isn't it? It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be 40 in October. Oh, so <laughs> I told him, I said, honey, you might be getting older, but guess what? I'm right behind you, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm three and a quarter years old, younger than he is, but how I much didn't realize you? three and a quarter years. Oh, that's not bad. That's not too bad, though. No. I, I thought it was two and a quarter years younger, and I realized, wait a second, he is indeed three and a quarter years older than I am. Well, Dave, let me ask you the question. Let's let, let's get back to what we were talking about, about yes. going down memory lane, you know. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm hearing some very good and happy memories, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, but can, can, can you guys relate to Diane? You know, it was kind of bittersweet for her. You know, the the memories of, uh, you know, finding this picture and, and you know, looking way back mm-hmm. on her life, you know, when back to the oh, normal days, let's call them what they are, back to the normal days. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you guys do that? Um, do you allow yourself to, to do that? Was it you, Virginia, that said, no, you, you basically don't allow yourself, you, um, you kind of pull the stops there? I think it was you who said that. Mm-hmm. Um, you just don't want to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, why? Because is it too painful? Um, is it too hard I to just remember? Said, is it I just, just don't want to feel the sadness again. I just figure that if, you know, there's things in my life that I feel a lot of sadness for, but that's one of them that I, that's one place I don't want to go. So I don't. Let by God be by God. Pardon? What about you, Day? I said, I said, is that kind of like let by God be by God or something? To me, well, I, I don't know. That, that's that's part of your life. I guess that's what I'm really asking mm-hmm. because it's not like um, a, the distant memory of an event. You know, like mm-hmm. like going to a concert that you guys were talking about. You know, it's not mm-hmm. like that. This is. Your life. This is mm-hmm. um, a section. Uh, this is a slice, a big slice of your life. You know, before, before MS, when things were relatively normal. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked um, a lot about, um, you know, the the in between people. Remember oh, yeah. that? Yeah, we've talked, and, oh, and, yeah. and everybody seems to be, you know, really relate to that because I think that is something. To me, anyway, um, is very difficult to um, recall because mm-hmm. of the memories and all, you know, the experiences that um, are surrounding that and that period of life. And most of them, for me, were not favorable. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm talking about well, you know, even before the in-between stage. And for those listening for the first time maybe on the replay. What is she talking about in between people? Mm. The in between people um, are the people who are experiencing and by the way that's a a phrase I have coined. Um, that's a, that's not a medical term. But um, the the people who are experiencing symptoms, you know, MS symptoms. And um, it the symptoms are really reacting and impacting the normalcy of your life, but you don't know why. You don't know what they are because you have not been diagnosed yet. So that's what I mean is that in between period. You don't feel right. And you know there's something wrong. Right, exactly. But what about the time leading up to that when, well, you know, um, Heather was telling us about the time she and her friend went to the ranch. You know, I mean, man, those had to be some really golden years. If you ask me, that just sounds awesome. And um, I think we've all got stories like that, um, whether it's 
you know, going back into childhood years or early adulthood or whatever the case may be. You know, we're all different. We've all got a different life story. But the fact is that we all at some point can look back and say, okay, this is when, you know, everything was hunky-dory. It Well, pretty much. It was, it was okay, you know. Um, and I was heading down the road. In fact, let me um, bring up a, a name, excuse me, familiar to all of us. And we use his articles a lot, Devin Garland. You know, we use a lot of Devin's um, work. His, 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 um, he's a very prolific writer these days. But, you know, he was going to be, if memory serves, a software engineer. Very bright fellow. And uh, he's young. He's um, day. I think he's about your age or Dan's okay. age right now. And, yeah. Uh, but that was all, you know, all, all his plans were thwarted by, guess what, the MS. monster. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, I mean, he can look back on, um, and he he doesn't talk about it often. In fact, very, very seldom um, talk about himself and those those pre-existing days, you know, when life was normal. And, um, you know, I, I, I ran across this article from Diane Scott, who really gets into it and her feelings about it, all triggered by this darn photograph, as she calls it. Well, you know, I can understand why she, why she calls it a darn photograph, because it stirs <laughs> pot. You know, it goes back, it, 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 it just stirs up all kinds of memories. And um, as, as you all have said, it makes you sad, mm-hmm. you know. It does. Um, I think you're all handling it very well, what I'm hearing you talk about, because we're going back before you were at the in-between stage. And if you ask me, that in-between stage is rough. Because, it can be rough. Yeah. Well, yeah. see, I, when I grew up, I took over Dad's Are you there? Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, because my microphone moved again. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, go, you're, you're okay now. You're, I, you're good now. Okay. Goats. And I think it, the most, I, the milk, the amount of goats I milked were like seven of them. All right, Dave, we are losing you on the breakup. Can you adjust yeah. that okay. a little bit better and repeat what you just said? I sit, Can you hear me? Yes. yes, right now. Okay. Because I move. used to milk goats. I'm not moving. <laughs> yeah, I just so sit here ahead. staring into the, to the present earth. So, anyway. But, no, I used to milk the goats and stuff, and I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And it was fun, once upon a time, I could lift 70 pounds live weight. I, now I'm having a hard time. Listening, 30 cows live weight. His name is Hunter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hear Val. Do I hear Val? We hear somebody. Go go ahead. Val, if you want to cut in, just go right ahead, if that's you. Yeah. Go ahead, Day. Okay. Now, like I said, I was milking the goats, and that was, that was my favorite thing to do, I guess. But then I thought I was going to be getting married, so I told, I said, I'm going to have to quit milking the goats, pass them off to one of my siblings. You can go back to milking her dad. And, well, my sister started milking the goats and stuff like that. I didn't realize I was really bad off. I was worse off than I thought. That was when I started getting the symptoms for the MS, so forth oh, like really? that. Yeah. But if I could go back to milking goats again, I think I would love to do that. Mm. I says, it's like kind of a trip down memory lane for myself. I just enjoyed milking those goats. Sometimes I, I says, I guess you could say that goats and I have kind of a love-hate relationship. <laughs> I loved them and yet I hated them. <laughs> they could be little stink pots. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I wasn't exactly nice myself. So you miss those days. You, you you miss those days. How do you deal with I it? I sure do. How, how do you how do you deal with that now? You know. Um, I not to think about it. Say again. To, I said I try not to think about it. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I think, man, I'd just love to milk a goat again. 
little teeth that are dead. Mm-hmm. I tried to milk a cow once. It is difficult. Let's put it, it that is. way. It is, yes. I can Very difficult. That. Dave, that is so funny that you're bringing up milking these goats. Just <laughs> I, I grew well, up on a farm. Did you? And we, we, we had cows. When I was in the sixth grade, the... Um, my brothers went, they bought milking units, you know, so oh, yeah. we did not, that, I did, I knew how to do that and put those units on, but the boys usually, they got more and more cows and, you know, the herd yeah. grew. But before that, we, I did used to help milk the cows by hand. And yeah. the, reason, the reason why I was thinking about it, I think it was something on TV. They were like showing you how to really milk the cow properly and you know ah. use your fingers. And I, I was laughing to myself. I thought, geez, no what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was not doing it properly. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, Carol, let me ask you. You know, um, how do you feel about your past life? Let's. Yeah, let's call it what it is. You, know, you guys, it is who I, my, you know, to me, some of this stuff, it's just like yesterday. Even though I'm in my 70s, you know, and I'm getting older, it's just like yesterday. And um, when you're talking about these pictures, I'm thinking of, somebody had asked, you know, I should get out my pictures and blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe I don't want to look at the pictures of my ex husband who really really hurt me but I do remember you know and I'm thinking I do remember my brother Bill and he's facing cancer right now he lives in Omaha and he 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 and his wife that they got married young high school sweethearts and they they have this movie camera okay I got a call coming in I have to take real quick go ahead thank you come back when you can I will. Anyway, throughout the years, Hello. Uh, he would sometimes, if my mom would come down or whatever, he'd bring out the younger uh, uh, movie camera pictures that were taken, and on there are of my dad. And it's like, as soon as I see them, tears just start flowing from my eyes. I just think, oh, there's dad. You know, and it looks just like him. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like I'm glad my brother has those. Wow. Uh, you know, I I don't know how I really feel about looking at pictures. I'm glad I have them. Mm-hmm. Right. Because yeah, they're, Dad they're always part said of we, you, part yeah, of your life, and part of your history and your family's history, and yeah. your history, of course. My dad always, as we were growing up, he said, don't ever throw a picture away. Very you know, interesting. Like very if you did not like it. And, you know, the pictures that they had were very uh, valuable to, to them. Oh, yes. Uh, well, they probably didn't have many, you know. No, not like we do today. I mean, they, they right. had very simply a simple operating simply operating we you know what I'm they were and, very precious and they were precious they were true precious possessions yes but because it is frozen in time but uh, you know i guess you know the, the the point i'm trying to make is that all this is frozen in time and whether we choose to ignore it um i I, I guess you know, we're, we're all we're all the same, but we're all a little different too. And I guess in in I am not the type of person personally just to you know throw a monkey wrench in the works here. <laughs> I'm not the type of person who can do what you guys do. I cannot you know close the door and you know say um, I'm not going to look at that uh, again. I'm not going to remember that again. Um, oh, now that you know, I certainly don't go in and. Uh, um, you know, have pity parties or, you know, go go back. But I do walk down memory lane occasionally. And there are some very bittersweet memories from, from the standpoint for me that um, this once was and where might life have gone if MS didn't come along, you know. Okay, we'll never know. It's like we were talking about um, 
Diane in her article, Devin, Devin uh, what's his name, and, and his uh, huge uh, and very expensive, he, he says, education. Scarlett. To get, hey, thank you. Um, Scarlett, yeah. On the, on the road to his, his uh, would-be profession, which he never could um, engage in fully. Um, I'm kind of like that. You know, I mean, I can't pretend that it didn't happen. I can't pretend that I once had dreams and ambitions um, and hopes and desires um, that would never manifest. I didn't know that at the time, but I see more and more people admitting it, you know, or grieving over it. And I think it's okay to grieve over it. I think it's okay to, to grieve and say, doggone it, I can't hold my camera to take the picture I want, like we heard Heather talk about. Um, and, and that's not a self-pity thing. It's the way it is. It's a frustration. And how do we deal with it? Mm-hmm. That was where I'm going with this. How do we deal? Yes, maybe you're the type of person who can shut the door on it and not revisit it again. There are people like that. You know, it's just mm-hmm. in your DNA. You can do it. I'm not one of those. And I kind of marvel at, in a way, at people who can, because, wow, you can do that. Um, you know, I, 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 I just can't do that. So I have to deal with it in my own way. And I know that there's a lot of people on the call now who are dealing with, with stuff like that in their own way. You know, um, you can't pretend that it didn't happen. And uh, I guess maybe some of you can. Which, um, like I said, I kind of marvel at. But um, am I am I making sense? But I guess you are making plenty of sense. Mm-hmm. And I look, I have to look back at my and say, "Wow, going down memory lane, and say, oh, what might have been." Yeah. But you know, it's just yeah. my, I know, my, I my life has turned out differently than I was totally expecting. So the next question day is, well, was this meant to be? I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, I don't have the answers to that stuff. But no, do, do, do you ask issues. yourself? You know, I mean, I'm always preaching we live in a physical world and stuff happens, and we that do. is so true. But, mm-hmm. you know, there are people who actually believe it was meant to be. I'm not sure what the logic is. I've never really explored it, but I've heard it spoken. So, um, but the fact is, it's a game changer. It's a life changer. And we have that option, everybody does, of looking back on our lives and saying, gee, look, I was headed in this direction, but uh-oh, I had to you know, turn around and go that way instead, another direction that I just wasn't counting on. Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know, make different plans and make the best of it. Best, you know, got lemon, a lemon, make lemonade, that, that, that kind of thing, you know. Exactly. And I just to think, hmm, I could have been. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not talking about self-pity or going back and, and, and walking down memory lane and being remorseful. Um, although I do, did hear that in Devin Garland's explanation. I did hear a little bit of that, the, uh, uh, the sorrow in Diane's voice in her piece. And surely there is. Because, you know, people have, you know, made plans for life. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's through education or uh, developing a talent, maybe a musical talent or um, an artistic talent or a- any, anything like that, um, or bit talent in business, and all of a sudden, oops, I guess that's not going to happen. I've got and then to somebody threw a monkey plans. wrench on the plans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Presuming right. there were plans. Right. Right. Well, I think we all have plans to one degree or another simply exactly. by um, being whatever personality we are. We're all bent in a certain direction according to the personality that we've been given. And whether we make life plans around those talents or desires or interests, you know, remains to be seen. Whatever we choose to do, some people don't. They just don't. But most everybody does, so I think I'll try this, right? Boy, I really want to learn how to do that. Whatever it is, you know? Yeah. So, 
anyway, that was that's that's the point. Uh, does anybody want to add to that, or you know, make a make a pronouncement? <laughs> Words of wisdom, pearls of wisdom. Come on, throw your pearls of wisdom at me. <laughs> the the well, only thing I, thing I can say, Sue Ellen, is that it seems to me that um, how do I put it? like something I can't do today, that then a few years later, I can do it. So for example, I have never been able to get myself to go to my old office and say hello to all the old employees. I've never gone there in my wheelchair. I imagine there'll be a day that I feel, yes, I can do it now. So it seems to me that it's like, um, you know, like, like, say, for example, my old pictures, like, I'm in them all the time. That doesn't bother me. But there's some things that I just, I feel like I don't want to do that yet. Mm-hmm. I imagine someday I will. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, 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 you have the desire and the will, and you're keeping an open mind that, okay, not today, but maybe tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah. that's a really good thing, Heather. That's a very positive it is. thing. Yeah. yeah. Because you're you're keeping an open mind, um, in you know, and not just slamming the door down on it. And yet, I'm not criticizing anybody, Virginia, for saying that because that's your way. Yeah. You know, that's your way of dealing mm-hmm. with it. And that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to see how everybody, you know, how you how you'd handle it. You know, when you're when you're put up against, um, you know, these this really sensitive stuff. How do you? Mm-hmm deal with it, you know, and, and Heather, to answer your question and to really go there, yeah, I think it's great that, you know, you've got an open mind that, you know, okay, not today, but maybe someday. And mm-hmm. I think that's great. I, I, I really do. I really do. Well, it's just like Day here wanted to be an author one time. Mm-hmm. I kind of gave up on that because everything, I mean, my hands were so bad, I couldn't even write. Right. I even tried to go to my left hand thinking maybe I could try to use it. It didn't work any better than the right one did. Yeah. I was like, hey, my handwriting is back to normal again now, but I kind of lost the start to even write. My little boy, so he learned how to say dinosaur, and he said, little toy taxi. He says, okay, let's say that your little dinosaur is a taxi cab driver, and he's going to somewhere, I don't know, to visit somewhere. And I thought, well, dinosaurs driving taxis. That sounds like kind of fun. That is cute. And you never know when that, that spark of inspiration is going to hit you, Day. You know? That's very um, true. I, I'm a great believer that these these inspirations, these desires, they can go to sleep on us. They can yes, go they to can. sleep. But they don't and go away. My little inspiration is Hunter. Yeah. Because every time he does something, I always inspired by something, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the big thing, I think, that, like, I mean, this is different, but a few years ago, my niece said to me, Auntie Heather, I've lost my love of writing, or of reading. And I said to her, no, you haven't. I said, I could not read for many years when I was busy working in that. But now that I'm sitting in a wheelchair and I have lots of time to read, I still have my love of reading. So... I think it is that right now your son is far more important, and so you maybe, like like Dylan said, you put your love of writing on to sleep. I imagine when Hunter's grown up, I bet you anything that love of writing will come back. It probably will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now you have time to do it. Exactly. And to develop it. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. So uh, the the one thing is that I, you know, I want to leave everybody with is never give up. Never give up. Exactly. And, you know, sometimes we have to redirect things in life, you know. That's very true. We just have to redirect things. But it, it it doesn't make you a different person. It doesn't take away any interest, not really, or talents, not really. Like I said, they may they may go to sleep on you, but they don't go away. 
they they don't go away. They're still no, they there. Don't. They're still part of you. They're just asleep. They're asleep. Mm-hmm. They are. It's That's all. In the future, we'll awaken them again. They they Sue will. Ellen? They can. Yes. I I just thought figured I'd share a story. This is Melanie. Hi. Um, hi. I used to be a huge horseback rider. I was really into equestrian and so forth, and it's really difficult for me. I mean, now I can't really get on a horse um, without a lot of assistance. Um, but I. I am trying to use my love of horseback riding to, you know, um, assist with maybe getting children that have, you know, because it, it's very therapeutic for people. Oh, yeah. And children that, you know, have cerebral palsy and have spinal cord injuries. And, yeah. I you know, I work with some of those um, folks and just to inspire them to love horses, to understand, you know, so I... I I try to push my passion for equestrian, you know, therapy and that riding, just horses in general, that other people discover that, you know, that they they can also enjoy it. It's like the only thing I can find, um, you know, to try to stay in that world. But, yeah, I definitely encourage that whatever sparks people's interest, say, be it photography, you know, to maybe take those photographs or continue having other people take photographs for you but make an album, you know, and or put it together in some way or still just share that that passion and that talent because I, it's something that, you know, other people really would appreciate. Because if you, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Melanie, that is wonderful. That is yeah. that is really mm-hmm. wonderful. And the fact I, I that, agree. Yeah, and you're a you're a go getter. And you you mm-hmm. are you keep on going, you know, yeah. and you don't you don't quit. No. You don't mm-hmm. quit. I remember when you and I first met <clears throat> and um we started talking and one of the first stories that you told me well you told you told the whole group, but uh you know, I I'll never forget <clears throat> pardon me, is uh you know, you actually in order to clean up after your dog, shall we say, you take the dog on a walk and you being on the scooter and you would have to get down on the ground, literally on your on all fours yourself. Yep. Yep. And I remember that and a lot of you do on this call too, remember where she has come from. And Melanie, you have made strides literally I mean literally, not just figuratively, but literally made strides in this world that some people can only dream about or only wish for. And I am a great believer that you have done that because of your determination yeah. and your openness and um, you know, keeping really your, your spirit open and your mind open. And I commend you. I really salute you. I agree 100%. Yes. No, well, thank you, Mike. But it really, I mean, I want it for anybody that listens to this to know that, you know, it was through a lot of tears and a lot of grieving of losing things and now just trying to refocus it, you know, um, to, to keep that joy because we're all responsible for our own joy, you know. We can't allow other people to take our joy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't Mitt Romney's wife have MS? And yes. I can't yes. think of her name. Yes. And um, I know she's, you know, she'd have enough money to do all of the things that a person should do mm-hmm. to get yourself better. But I think one of the things she's done is this horseback riding. Yes. Yes, she did. Her house. Yeah. Very, yeah. very therapeutic. Very, And horses... Um, um, are very intuitive animals. They're not just smart, but mm-hmm. they're intuitive, mm-hmm. and they really connect and bond with humans. Mm-hmm. So it it cuts both ways when you're talking about horses. It's a, it's a two-way street with them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> so anybody listening to this, if you if you have that opportunity, wow, I, I sure encourage you. Uh, all right, guys, we are at the – we're past the top of the hour. This is amazing. Time to go. Yeah, it's it's a great talk. Um, anybody want to toss their hat in the ring one more time before we close out this portion of the call? Well, it's just really nice to hear from you, Melanie. I haven't heard from you for a while now. Yeah. No joke. 
You doing all right, Melanie? I'm always sneakily listening, you know. (laughs) (laughs) You're the mystery caller, huh? (laughs) Maybe. No, but I I, I just, it's always at the end, and I'm so sorry. I always have to blurt something out right when you're trying to end it and go into prayer. I have to make my announcement, so. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's great. Anytime. But I love all you guys very much. Well, we love you, we too. We love you, too. And yeah. We definitely do, Melanie. Yeah. Yep. 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 Really good to have you here. Thanks. Well, You're guys. Doing some great work there. Keep it up. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. It's only yeah. getting better, I know. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, thank you for all of your input. It's really, really been eye-opening. Um, wow. <clears throat> yeah, and there, there always is so much to talk about and so many places to go with these subjects. Sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to know where to go, but, mm-hmm. um, but easy in a way because, you know, we're all, we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. And you I think betcha. That's, yeah, I think that's the important thing to remember is, uh, you know, we all may be a little bit different in many, many ways, but we're, we're all the same. And the big deal is we're all in this together. So what I'd like to do now is um, to close out the commentary portion of our prayer and go into the prayer portion. And for those who do not know what the prayer portion is, we always end these calls and these discussions with a prayer to say thank you to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has brought us all together. Believe me, believe me, if it were not for God in heaven. This call would not happen. I'll save that story for another day, but trust me on that right now. So we want to say thank you. And we do that by closing out with a, with a prayer and reading names on the prayer list. And yeah, uh, by the I way, have us, no, no new names for the prayer list no on my name. end. Anybody else have any names to include on the prayer list today? Okay. All right. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is um, I'm going to switch phone extensions Hey, do I have everybody here? Do I still have you guys? I'm, still, I'm connected? still here. Okay. <clears throat> me too. Excuse me, long as okay, long as I'm still connected. All right. So let us go ahead now and enter the prayer portion of our call, and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, asking for your divine intervention into the lives of so many that need your help. And we ask that you answer our fervent prayers to help those who are in need and afflicted with multiple sclerosis and other ailments and diseases that are interfering with their lives and in many cases crippling their lives. And as we read these names aloud now, Father, we ask we ask that the Holy Spirit move through these lines of communication that are connecting us all around the world and that the Holy Spirit carry our voices together with our prayers into the heavens and that you will hear our prayers and grant comfort to those who ask for your divine intervention in their lives, for them and for their families, and grant them healing, restore them to good health, and that you will cover them with your blessings and your divine presence and protection. And we thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I will now read the names on the prayer list. Donnell, Linda, Sandra, Erica, Shemang, Dyke, Carlos in Canada, Janet Carroll and family, Tish and Luke Roskams in the UK, Mary Ferris, Jeremy Mann, Julie Perkins, Rashawn Jefferson, Damon Jones, Scotty Williams, Barbara Cleary in the UK, Linda Hawley, Sylvia, Greg Evenson and family, Arthur Marsalis, Veronica Lewis, Tanya Thompson, Kathy Pedrick, Mark, Francine Mancari, Tamala Lewis and family, Michelle, Joe in the UK, Carol in Iowa, Edie in Missouri, Alberta in Kansas, Willem Konacek, Sandra Moen in Canada, Susan, Russ Dizdar and family, Donna and Nathan Leal, Kathleen in Boston, Frankie, Melissa, and Destiny in Boston, Tracy Whiting, Clint and Cliff in Kansas, Phyllis in Kansas, Jennifer in the UK, Linda Jean, Sherry Gudgeon, Sabrina Sutton, Tracy Thacker, 
Melanie Monteith, Edie Neal, Sybil Wyndham, Manfred Pauli in Venezuela, Donna and son Andrew, Mubin in South Africa, Rona, Noor, Rami, Ferris, Mohammed, Jill Han, Travis and Ellen Thacker, John, Tommy and his family, Dennis Walker, Bay, Maria in South Africa, Jennifer, Charlotte Matrisic, Maria in Nevada, Louise in Alabama, Patty in Alabama, Sybil Wyndham, Gloria, Contessa, Mrs. Disney, Ladios, Dr. Paul Hegstrom, Lorraine, Irene, Lydia, Mike Newcomb, Beverly, Raza, Jason, Charlene Kelly, Daniel and Faniel in Toronto, Frankie, Robert, Stacy, Judy, Sarah, Sherry, Ron and Marge, Terry, Tim and Michelle, Constance Wadlington, Toretta, Glenda, Larry Nichols, Melanie, Floyd, Amy and Eric Olson, Trudy, Gladys, Gerald Taylor, Diamond, Gregory, Irma, Travis John, Ertis, Demarcus, Anne, Richard Bresen, Helen, Pearl, Irma, Grace, Rebecca, Linda and Joe in the UK, Dan and Jason Junker, Dion, Joshua and Johnny, Kalila, Ara Lee, the Marsh family, Julie Mullins, the Grant Anderson family, Chad Cowan, Randy Guerra, Barry Walcott, Tina and CJ, Ray, Mackenzie, Deborah, Sally, Joe and family, Gina, Mary in Alaska, Veronica Thomas, Karen in Seattle, Michael Freeman, Megan, Trudy, Jeremiah Mask, Gwenadi in Russia, Jeff Olson, Kelly in Texas, Jennifer in Kansas, Geneva Norris, Latasha Coleman, Seth Thomas, Jim Thomas and family, Tanisha Washington, Cindy, Guillermo, Eula Cooper, Robert Alexander, Leo Torres, Chris Elias, Jeff London, Jared and John, John Chambers and family, Eddie Tiny, Leslie Cavazos, Ryan Cadillo, Aaron Marsh, Jimmy in the UK, Valerie and Hillary Perry, Blanche Collins, Flick Mays, Michael Kuhlman, the Pope family, the Baldonado family, Mary Jo in, Far- in Fargo, Daniel Duran, Dr. Marty Sanders, the Hargrave crew, Lena Davis family, Sharon in London, Billy Medlock, Lola Striggles, Rund- Rundella Canida, Dave McCartney and family, Shay Standifer and family, Billy Coleman, Rita Nixon, James Grace, Alton Johnson, the Johnson family, Tracy and Alice Daniels, the Elias family, Arlen, Kathy and Al Matthews, Deborah Yarsley Lorenzo, Chadrick Watson, Kevin Giles, Eric, the Collins family, the Johnson family, Trevia Powell Clark and family, Ray LaBelle, Tony Delcy, Edward McFarland, Seth, Malaya Marnie Horton Fisher, Abe Martinez, Roscoe, Hattie Battle, Alberta and Chuck, Isabel, Enoch Bryant, Sister Wanda Burke, Anthony Canida, Trinity Johnson, Curtis Warren, Susan Trotter, Rhonda Pryor, Wanda Burke, James Washington, Enoch Bryant family, Aretha McKinney, Arlene Matthews, Lee Pittman, Blessed Hardeman, Andre Giles, Penny, Bonnie, Loretta, Ray Charles, Wayne Jones Jr., Khadija Cooper, Becky and family, Ashia and Kanisha Morrison, Jeff Olson family, Sybil Morrison and family, Trelina Hope, the Gafford family, Emily Aguilar, Shalandra Kelly, Ann Downs, Irvin Gudgeon, Latosha Coleman, Jackie Clark. And I will leave you 
with this. Lord, help me to remember that nothing is going to happen to me today that you and I can't handle. Amen. 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 And guys, that takes care of heart talk for this week. Gosh, time time flies. It really does. It it just flies. It does for me anyway. And I'll look uh, at the clock. Oh my gosh. T- time I'm flies fine. whether you want it to or not. <laughs> yes. And whether does. you're having fun or not. <clears throat> I it think we does. were having fun. How did the storm turn out down there? I wrote it out, obviously. I'll be honest, when you ladies were talking, I put the phone down more than once, um, so I did not have physical contact with it and and let you talk. I didn't want to hang up unless I absolutely had to, but, you know, we were getting lightning and a lot of thunder. But it it fell apart, thank God. So, you know, um, I could hear you. I, I could hear what you were saying, but I just did not have it up to my ear because it was just a little too close. But So that's the way I handled that day. That's okay. That's yeah. good. But I did have to for sure. That. Yeah, I, I know because you know it's not a good idea when you've got lightning going on. Um, but it stayed. Uh, yeah. it kept moving east from us. It kind of brushed us up against the shoreline here, and it kept moving east. So I'm glad of that. So thank you for asking. But oh, you're very I welcome. I missed anything you ladies were talking about, but I just I just gave you your gave you the reins. I'll let you go. <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, it's um, it's great. I love I love just sitting around visiting with you all and talking with you and hearing what's on your mind and and finding out how you feel about this or how you feel about that and what your experiences are and and where where do we go from here? And I think that's a lot of of what we talk about. Where do we go from here? And uh, that that might be uh, a good subject to talk about. You know, where mm-hmm. do we go from here. We've got so much going on in the world these days. I know. Um, you know, and uh, it's affecting everybody's life. And how is it affecting you? Hmm. Maybe we'll talk about that next time. What do you think? Dave? Maybe so. What Maybe so. Think? Yeah. Kind of explore that that road. See where that road takes us. Cause, um, Trying to put our thinking caps on. Yeah. Put our thinking caps on and yeah. go on down that road and see where it takes us and find out what everybody's thinking. So, exactly. In the Sounds meantime, good. In the meantime, I'm going to just, I'm going to turn you back out in the world. And much as I love visiting with you, I'm going to turn you back out in the world and say goodbye for now. And okay. hope that you have a wonderful day and a great week ahead. And that I'll see you again next week, next time, right back here, next Tuesday, here on Heart Talk. Sounds so good. Stay safe, stay safe out there. And remember, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Blessings to everyone. Bye.